Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So I am back with the Devlin. This is going to be a weekend where I'm going to focus only on the Devlin and try to button everything up and get it finished so I could probably ship it out on Monday. I know the owner is, uh, after showing him pictures of it, he's pretty excited to get it back and I am pretty excited to give it back to him. I've had a few hiccups here and there with the finish problems and stuff. I end up correcting all that. I've got a nice and you can't even tell as far as feeling it here and here where the difference is between gloss and a matte finish. So it gives them a fast speed neck. Headstock is completed, so I don't have to worry about that. Ended up having a little bit of a problem where I sanded through the clear coat. Sometimes you have an issue, as long as you know how to fix it, and fix it right to where you can't notice it, that works out great. Got my soldering station going over here, because I'm going to be putting in some electronics. Now, he wanted me to use uh, the parts that he sent with this thing, okay, as far as electronics goes. I got a couple of pickups here that came out, I guess, another Devlin, and I didn't know they were plug and play. So, what I ended up doing is a screw stuck in here. We got to check to make sure there's no funny business going on. I've already checked these guys out. They do work. I, as you can tell, they look like they're brand new on the top. Well, these used to have a metal cover over them, and I guess the owner took the, the metal covers off. Well, they had wax all over the top, and it, they look like shit. So I cleaned them up a little bit. I threw them on a buffer, and as you can see, they look like they're pretty much like brand new now. Also, I tried to clean up the pickup mounting rings that were on this and I really didn't have no luck there's like some shit on the plastic the plastic is marred scarred whatever you want to call it and they just yeah I, I don't want to use them I don't want to put used parts this one here is kind of like looks like it melted a little bit around here but uh, I don't want to put used parts that don't look good on something that has been uh, restored sort of say we finished so I've got a set of brand new pickup rings that I've got nice and shiny brand new uh, that I'm gonna put on this also the output jack it's I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that or not inside that hole if it'll focus in on it or not but there is uh, a lot of oxidation inside there and I'm not even gonna test or even try to attempt to clean it so I've got a brand new jack already mounted onto the plate. I buffed out the plate a little bit. The three-way switch, eh, it's probably seen better days as well. And uh, I've never tested it to see if it's going to work or not. But I'm sure it still does. But I've got a brand new, even though it's, it's chrome, uh, I can change out the screws on there to put it black with the old one. This is an Epiphone, brand new switch, three-way. What else? Um, the knobs, I was thinking about changing out too, um, but I don't have a set of black knobs that are um, like Allen key locked. And what I mean by that is there's a set screw inside of it and you lock it down with an Allen key onto the potentiometers. Uh, the ones that he has are kind of rusted and if I try to polish that out, they'll probably turn these things silver. So what I do have is a set of, these are solid metal, they're Cosmo Black. Or I can put some speed knobs on here that are white. And it'll match the cap for the three-way switch. Because the way this is going, alright, I'm trying to keep the color scheme. Now he was asking me about... Um, you know, pickups put inside of here, because I tested his out, I've got a shitload of other pickups that uh, came out of other guitars, but they're good, they're, there's nothing wrong with them, and they're probably a little bit better than these, I know that the ohms of them, was, on some of them are a lot higher than what these guys are, and these guys uh, aren't too bad as far as ohms go, but they're not like a high, high output pickup. Uh, so like where the three-way switch is going to go over here, I got a black stripe going through here. So with the white switch, that'll look pretty good. Over here, 
uh, would be black. Okay, I would go with probably a black since I'm going white here, black here. And it'll go with the color scheme of this. Or I take the black cap off of the old one and I put it on the new one, keeping this black and going with uh, maybe two white knobs. I don't know. So we'll figure this out. Right in this area over here where the tremolo or Floyd is, uh, I don't know if you remember on some of the older guitars, but there would be a rubber pad over here and it would be a rubber pad going all the way around it. So this is a little bit of a thicker rubber pad on this side and this is a very thin rubber pad over here. So you should be able to pull backwards, forwards, do whatever you want with the whammy bar with no troubles at all. I already put a set of black uh, strap locks on here. So that's done and over with. I've got two 500K potentiometers, the CTSs, got two of them here. Now one thing that I like to do, and some guitars don't do this, some will just throw in a lock washer and then put the nut on the other side, uh, the, the front side of the body with a washer and lock down the potentiometer to where they don't spin it. I don't like that, okay? To me, um, if it ever comes loose, that potentiometer ever comes loose and you have decide to tighten it down, if you over tighten it, you could pull the shaft or not the shaft, but whatever you want to call the sleeve, okay? Pull the sleeve right off the shaft, all right? And it'll come right out of the body of the potentiometer because all this is is just pressed in, all right? Tighten it up too tight and that comes off. Well, now you're out of the potentiometer and you're looking for another one. So I could put the short shaft inside of here. Problem is, is I can't get a nut on the inside. What that nut does with the lock washer keeps you from pulling this apart when you tighten them up. Some people like over tighten things and you know shit happens. So I went with the long shaft. Um, got plenty of them. I got potentiometers like crazy. I have to go through all of my drawers over here to reorganize everything because I'll end up going into a drawer, finding something, then going to another drawer, finding something else, and putting the stuff back into other drawers that they're not supposed to be. I just, it's a total mess over here as far as that goes. And then I got boxes over here on uh, the counter with parts of them as well. Uh, the original tuners should be going back on here. I, I got the back plates for them, uh, for the, the covers over here. Um, yeah, other than starting this thing up and getting it going, I got my soldering station going over here ready to just ready to go so one thing i want to do first is i've got to ground each side of one side of the post on these potentiometers so i'm going to do that right now and i'm going to move this a little bit off to the side because the heat from the soldering gun will actually kind of splatter some of the solder and i don't want that to happen Or sometimes the, um, oh, what the hell is that shit called? Uh, rosin will end up splattering from the solder. So I got my soldering gun. Got my solder. And I'm going to start working on these potentiometers and start getting this thing pretty much buttoned up to where I can ship it back hopefully on Monday. So I clean my soldering station iron it a little bit Put a little bit of solder in here and I'll lock that in place that's enough that's perfect get this one going too another thing I also do is I will sand in the area that I'm putting solder on these potentiometers because there is a little bit of a uh, like an oil coating that are on these so I want to make sure that that is cleaned and removed alright so that's done now the one thing with this thing is that you see that the cavity over here and then the two cavities for the pickups have been painted black actually they're not painted black I use the shielding paint also taking a q-tip or sometimes even um, uh, oh, I don't remember what they call those things we used to use them in school where they were like a, a brush but it was on a 
long metal thing. And if I have any, it does it look like a pipe cleaner? I think that's what they are, pipe cleaners. You can get them in different colors and stuff and do stuff with art with them. So I end up putting a little bit on uh, those, and I'll run it through the holes over here, going from one compartment to another compartment. They're all tied together, so that's not a big worry or concern. Sometimes I have, or used to have, a bunch of this wire as well. And I haven't had seen it or had it in a long time. So I don't know why they cut it so short over here and got rid of the ground wire, because we need that. So I'm going to have to make new new cuts for this. These guys here seem to be pretty long. Let me see my three-way switch that I'm going to use. And make sure that this black nut and black washer fit it. Oh yeah, that fits on there fine. Okay, that works out good. Go ahead and I got a bunch of parts that I'll be sending back with this thing. All the parts that I'm not using will all be sent back with him or for him and then he could dispose of them or use them or whatever all right so let's see here is brand new uh, one thing i want to do is where's my little piece of sandpaper at the head over here now i gotta cut another piece This metal post here for your ground, I sand it and it helps with the solder sticking to it a lot better because sometimes it doesn't, sometimes the solder doesn't want to stick because of the coating or whatever's on the metal. And another thing I like to do is check them. Make sure that these are tight. In this case, it is. All right, so I got that all set up. Go ahead and put it on a little thing over here. All right, so now you cut these wires. Don't mind me. I cut wires with my teeth. As far as like the insulation over the wires, I cut it with my teeth. I know some people will be like, oh, that's kind of disgusting. Trust me, I've done it for years. Never made me sick. I've got electrocuted a couple times, you know, 12 volts from a, uh, 12 volts at 80 amps on a car stereo. wires coming from the battery that I'll never do again all right so stripping this back gave me quite a bit for the input and the outputs or one input one output two inputs and stripped me enough wire for the ground and get these wires organized. I don't like having the wires. These shredded wires, I like to have them all on one side, like this, so it keeps it separated. I don't know if you can see that or not. Keeps them separated. And then I'll put a heat shrink tubing on that as well. And I am one who twists wires together. Always have. All right, so that's good. I need some heat shrinking tubing. Picked up a whole brand new shitload of heat shrink tubing. I'm trying to find a color heat shrink tubing that I want to use. All right, so this is going to be cut probably about this length. I'll put that over part of the wire. My torch. Now 
And I finally found a heat shrinking tubing that will cover just one wire instead of covering a bunch of wires. And this will go over the whole thing. Makes it a nice clean look. Alright, so I'm going to tin up wires first, especially that ground. Once you see that solder suck right into that what right into the wire, then you're tinned. Alright, so now I'm gonna lock this into place. Good, not going anywhere. All right, so I can use any one of these. So I think I'll use the white as the output. That'll go back to the output jack. <coughs> I'll use the white to the output jack. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. this is I'm going to lace it through the hole, twist it upwards, and bend it over, yeah, bend it over, and hit it with some solder. Try to get both of these two connected here. And we're good. They're both connected. Alright, okay, so I'll figure out which wire is which when I get this thing can put it in place. Covers don't sit flush. Go figure, right? See something here. That one does. Alright, so this is the old cover. I'm not going to use that because this new cover sits flush. Open the edges a little bit.
what I have is a piece of sandpaper on the 2x4 over here that uh, is supporting the countertops and what I end up doing is I'll sand the edges of the plastic this one here which was supplied with the guitar doesn't fit it might be because there's clear coat and stuff on here but uh, I'm not going to shave the clear coat off but I got a brand new cover right here never been used never been mounted and the holes have never been cleaned up burrs either that I can use that fits on this perfectly <laughs> I might have to put see I don't like the way this hole pattern is here either do I have to drill new holes uh, no I don't have to drill two new holes all right, so that's going to fit on there perfect. Now, somewhere here, there is a bag of teeny tiny screws. And I found it. What's this here for? Mesterbolts.com stainless steel pickguard screws. Oh, don't need those, but those will be going back to the owner. These are the ones I need. Like I said, anything that's not being used will go back to the owner because I'm not going to, I don't save or keep other people's stuff. That's good. Yeah, I know this is going to be cutting up a rag here for this. You'll see why. I've done this before. I'll take my wires, put it through the hole. Instant protection. Now what I want to do is I want to tin this whole piece here. This whole piece is going to get tinned. And where did I put my solder? See, protected the body, no problems. All right, so what I want to do is I want to shield all that. Where are my other cutters at? These are ones are better. And this one here will go directly to the tensioner, so I'm going to need about this much here. That'll work. My torch. This one here. Put all my wires in. Bring me down all the way to the base of this. Now, when he does get new pickups for this thing, and if, he's, if that's what he's going to do, he doesn't have to go through all this wire bullshit. All he has to do is 
Dis disconnect the ground, disconnect the hot wire from the potentiometer, and then he's, he's good to go. He doesn't want to have any type of a... Because uh, I was going to do push and pull pots on here, but he says he don't want that, so it's fine. Alright, so that's that. So to make this easy, let's put these guys, I can mount these guys. The washer, washer, lock washer, nut and nut. washer and the nut. So it's locked in place. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ground and tap it here. Just like so. You really shouldn't need any solder because there's already solder. I do need to tend this though. Because there's already solder on the wire. I shouldn't need to do any more solder down here because I tinned up the wire, so it should be all right. But I do want to get this in place where I want it. And there you go. Just like that. So then. Now we'll get the other potentiometer, which is right here. Put this in place. Oh, I forgot the lock washer. Lock washer first. Regular washer. Nut. this in position to where I want it. There we go. Now I'm going to measure this because this is going to go like this. is going to cover up all that so what I need to do is here to about and about there give it a little bit longer because heat shrinking tubing shrinks my torch back a little bit. Hot strip. Alright, so I didn't have to add a ground wire. I already came with one. The only thing I will do is have to do it for the output jack. <coughs> Alright, put a little solder on the tip. 
tip. There's the ground. I don't have to do any more as far as the ground goes because it's already covered. And it's also shielded, so I don't have to worry about that. So now, let's figure out what these guys are. So I believe the white is my going to the output jack. And these two are going to the potentiometers. I just have to figure out which one is which. This is where fluke comes into mind. Test for continuity. So these guys both should have continuity. This is Humbucker. Alright. And this should be Nick. Alright, so that's output. This is Humbucker. why you always leave the wires a little bit longer. Open up those holes a little bit. So where is my bit? Here it is. Just to remove the clear coat so I don't crack it. So put the output jack on, or in, fit will fit better than the other and that'll be this side here nope let me turn it this way yep that's the side one side fits better than the other always happens that way I don't know why nope I need the other bit I need the smaller bit where does the smaller bit go Hey, 
Where did my smaller bit go? I had it over here. Music like don't really need right now. I buried it over here somewhere. Yep, I did. Check is buttoned up. Now what I need is two grounds. One for the claw and one for the output jack and that's it. So this wire here, turn it off here. So that's connected. Now what's left is this right here. Which this isn't long enough to reach all the way over there, so I'm going to meet it halfway. Shut that off for now. Put this away. Put this away. I'll put some tools away. I don't need and then work on the front of this after I put the claw in. Right now I want to slide this over. Alright, so all that's left is one more ground, one more ground, and the two pickups, and that's it. So, right now, I'm taking a break. 
All right, don't you hate when you get everything set up for recording and you start doing the work and you forget to hit record? Yeah. So right here, what I want to do is I want to get the pickup location, but I can't get the pickup location until I put the bridge on. And I can't put the bridge on until I get the nut situated. And then I can put two strings on there and I can line up the pickups and mount them. But I can't do any of that until this nut gets taken care of. So I got a locking nut over here. You can see the location of the locking nut. What I ended up doing is, before it was completely flat over here and even, what I ended up doing is adding some wood here, giving it a radius right over here, nice and flat on top. Here's a picture of the original way after it was sprayed. And as you can see that the white stripe kind of goes over the top of where the nut location is. And now you can see where I kind of sanded it down and nice and flat using a block, using some sandpaper, sanded the finish off. I put more finish on it. This is a touch up candy apple red paint and I want to keep the wood sealed. And I'm going to end up putting a little bit of a clear on here as well just to make sure that the wood is nice and sealed up. So see I got my pencil there and this is a shaved pencil to where I can get a nice location of where everything is sitting on the nut even on a locking nut like I have here. You can kind of see that there's a line going across from E to E. It gives me an idea of how high I am also with the shims. I've got a 50 on the height of the fret added a 19 and I got my shims over here to make up the difference for the action height. So what I've done is put my nut in the location, put my shim over here at the nut and measured on both sides to see where I'm at and if I'm even. So that should give me my action height at the first fret. It can be adjustable. I mean, it can go up a little bit more if the owner wants it to, but right now I have it set hopefully for 19,000. And once I get everything mounted and get together over here, because I had to put some paint on here and I had to wait for that to dry, so now it's dry. And I decided, like, well, okay, let's edit the video and see what's going on. Well, there is no video. So this is two screws top mount as far as the locking nut goes. I ended up, uh, as you can see, it's got a nice, nice clean look to it. The only thing is, is the nut spacing as far as EDE on each side of the fretboard is not actually from end to end of the headstock. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a lip on that side over here. And there's a little bit of a lip on this side over here. I don't have a nut, and this is a guitar that didn't have any type of a uh, locking nut on there. So when you get to the edge of the fretboard over here, where the strings come out of the nut, it's really, really close, but because of the headstock flaring out a little bit, it gives it, makes it look a lot different. So the paint's drying. I wanna put another coat of paint on top of here just to seal it up and make it a little darker so it matches the body a little bit more as far as the headstock paint goes. So that's what I've been doing. And uh, yeah, after that, I could put the bridge back on, put a couple of strings, kind of line things up a little bit, and then the pickups get mounted. Uh, playing with the devil's nut. Devil's nut. Locking nut, that is. All right, so I want to see what's going on over here. I want to dry fit this nut. Get my two screws. And I'll show you how I check the action height at the first fret. Still got to put another coat of paint on here just to seal things up really good. One screw. <coughs> All right, so 
so I'm locking this down to make sure that there's no movement in the nut whatsoever. I know that the nut is right on the fingerboard or edge of the fretboard and it's locked into the neck. So everything is flush, everything's here. All right, so what I got here is my feeler gauges. And I got my other feeler gauges. So I'm looking for a nine feeler gauge. And was it a 46? Oh, I don't have 46. So I have to use the thickest one I got, which would be 25. All right. So I'll take this here, put it here. Ride this to see exactly how much more I gotta go down with it. I can use the nine on this side too, that's not a big deal. Yeah, so I gotta go down a little bit more with this, not much. So right now I'm a little bit above, should be about 18 or 19 to 20 thousandths above that fret and I gotta take that down some more now hopefully these aren't cheap screws and the head does not break So now you can see how I've been going at this. Piece of sandpaper on a block. And this is uh, 220 grit. Up against the fretboard. Side to side, nice and flat. And the reason why I'm not going like really fast with this is because I do not want to chip the finish on each side of the neck. So let's see if I can do this again. Yeah, I still gotta go down more. Both sides are pretty much even. How's my sandpaper looking? Yeah, it still has some grit left. Alright, so I got the nut mounted and I'm going over it with my feeler cages here and I am right on where I need to be. So now, if he wants it a little higher, you can put a shim inside there or underneath there or just leave it right where it is. It should be fine right where it is. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to remove the nut and put a little bit of paint to kind of fix the edges over here because you can kind of see wood and I want to cover it up real nice. Now if this nut was not set flat perfectly, this nut would be rocking and rolling forward and backwards side to side everything else and it is not. Alright, so did I chip out any of the finish on the side? Oh, very, very 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 little chip out right there so that's why I got the touch up paint and that's what I'm going to end up doing because I'm going to seal the finish around the edges over here so I'm using it's basically it's a candy apple red and it is really close to this finish I mean really close so I start off thin coat And then build it up. So what I want to do is I want to go towards the edge so I don't get a lip of finish. And the more I add as far as paint goes, the 
darker it's going to get. I might as well just paint the whole thing, right? And there's still a lot of room away from the nut. So he doesn't have to worry about the truss rod. Oh, sorry. There's a lot of room away from the truss rod. I don't mean the nut. Make sure I'm right up against the other finish. And I need to touch up a little bit right here. Actually, I'm going to need to dab it a little. And I want to get under that chip. under that chip and then I'm going to face it downwards so whatever is built up where that chip is goes direction of down instead of this way and makes a run on the finish that's already on here so once that dries I'll end up putting another coat on it give me a little bit of a sanding and then putting another coat on there as well as you can see here you have the matte finish going into a gloss there is no lip here whatsoever to feel make it real nice for playing all right so I'm gonna wait for that dry come back hit it again with a little bit more of the touch-up paint and well, I can start putting strings on it after I get the nut on there and the Floyd on there <laughs> 